2008 Liberty Forum continues with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance tour of the State House today, January 3rd, 2008. Attention. We're getting ready to break up. Uh, Representative Bederick is going to take one group. But just so you know what you're going to be coming in on, uh, the New Hampshire legislature is, uh, well, is unique in the fact that every bill that is submitted is heard. We do this by having uh, 20 standing committees, each with approximately 20 members. What you'll be sitting in on today are hearings on particular bills. You will see how the public gets to interact. And if there's no reason that if you feel, you look at the bill, you feel strong, then you couldn't actually testify. You submit a pink card, which lets the chairman of the committee know that you want to speak. You say whether you're speaking for or against, and who you're representing, whether it's yourself or some organization. Uh, and if you are uh, going to, uh, <laughs> you don't want to speak, but you want to register a position, then you can do what's called signing the blue sheet. And that just says your name, for or against. Um, this is Representative Bederick, and he's going to be taking you up because he's going to be testifying on a bill uh, on, on the banning of the sale of low efficiency light bulbs. So I'm going to have the opportunity to testify against that bill. And uh, how many of you here are residents of the state of New Hampshire? All right, great. So you'll all have the opportunity to sign in against this bill. Uh, now, I'm not as familiar with many other states, um, and certainly not as familiar as I am with the process in New Hampshire, but from what I've heard from others, New Hampshire may well be unique in that any average citizen can just show up on the day of the committee hearing, walk into that room, fill out a card, and actually be heard by the legislators who are ultimately going to make a decision on that bill. New Hampshire has the largest state legislature in the entire country, 400 representatives. The closest is Pennsylvania, which has just over 200. Uh, with 1.3 million people, we have about one legislature with 3,000 people. By far the most representative democracy in the world. Representative Republic. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so, follow me across the streets. The bill that you got originally was a mistake. They put in some language from something else and I didn't catch it. But my bill would have had exemptions for uh, different kinds of light bulbs like uh, refrigerated light bulbs and, and uh, black lights and things like that. Have some problems if it does take effect before the federal standards do take effect. Expedient to legislate. In other words, it means that the bill disappears. It is gone. It never existed, um, and it's it's good for us essentially. But like I said, um, it is preempted by federal law, so we've lost nationally, but we did win uh, in the state because. Um, well, the bill isn't actually dead until it goes back to a vote. Yes. In the house, right. that's one thing that's different here is they're not killing it in the committee. There is yes. one of the one of the amazing things about the state of New Hampshire that I really really like is that a bill cannot die in committee. It can come out with a negative committee recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, but every single bill ultimately does have to see the light of day. Now, there's a few tricks they can delay sending it to the House, but ultimately that bill has to go to the House and be considered by the House as a whole. And in other states, a committee can just kill the bill and the bill disappears. Or they could amend the bill and what they send to the House looks a lot different. Now, the House actually has to vote on the amendment. So a bill, that, uh, we may put in a bill and then the committee decides to make it completely different and they sign it to the House, we could still have a debate over the amendment first. And if we lose that, then you know, And in so fact, it goes. you have to debate over the amendment first. Yes, you must. And, and the, what, right. we actually, what we actually vote on on the House floor is not on the bill itself. We vote on the committee recommendation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes no can be yes and yes can be no. Right. Okay? You might have a good bill with a recommendation to ITL it. In which case, you want to vote against the ITL so that you can then make a motion of ought to pass. So when, you're, when you go online to the general court website, you have to make sure yes or no doesn't really mean anything w without the context of what is the motion on the floor. So that is really the key, is to learn the motions on the floor. 
There are a few things that can happen to Bill. Bill could be OTP, which means ought to pass. Could be OTPA, ought to pass with amendment. Could be ITL, which means inexpedient to legislate. And then there's a there's tabling the tabling or indefinite postponement, indefinite postponement, which is essentially a tabling that, with a stronger version of a tabling. Which is, is a way to which is a, which is a way of killing a bill, but you don't do it until you yeah. get to the House floor. There, there's there's a number of different votes. There's what's called a voice vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye or nay, right? Then uh, and, and you don't know who said aye or nay. It's just you know if it's a majority or not. If um, sometimes they'll call for a division. Now sometimes if the voice vote was unclear, they'll call for a division which means everybody pushes the red or the green button and you know exactly how or many people voted this or way or that way. Or anybody can call for a division. Or you can call for a division in advance if you think it's going to be uh, close. You push the red or the green button, but you don't know who voted how. Then there are the roll call votes, which means you need at least 10 people to call for a roll. Any one person call for a division, you need 10 to call for a roll call. And if you have a roll call, you know exactly every single legislator, how they voted or if they voted. <laughs> but we have uh, five minutes before the committee hearing starts downstairs, so I could probably take one question. Yeah. Um, I've noticed in this state most of the bills are about a page long. Mm -hmm. yes. In other states that I've seen, they're about that thick. It's a book. Yes. <laughs> What's the difference? Is in, there a reason for this? Yes. In New Hampshire, a bill can really only cover one topic, with few exceptions like the budget. And well, so, they say that in other states too. Yes, but we but actually we force it. The, <laughs> we actually enforce it. So. Um, you know, no system is completely perfect, no system is totally free of corruption, but uh, the system we have here is by far the most representative, it's by far the most open. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were able to, and you're going about to see again, um, testimony on hearing, and it, it really is an amazing thing how the you know, average citizens of New Hampshire, how much openness there is uh, with this government. You can go online and read any single bill and the amendments and stuff no, like that. No, you can't read the amendments. Oh, you can't read the amendments, okay. that's right, until, until after it's uh, passed, yeah. until, until it's passed the House. And, Right. I believe you can read it if the, if the House adopts it. From prohibiting their residents from using clotheslines. So it's a violation of private property yeah, rights. Right. The thing is, the bill affects both zoning, which is a, which is a, a local government issue, and private contracts. If they had eliminated the, if you could go ahead and, and tell your tenant, no, my lease with you says you can't do a clothesline. If you find bill, they could go ahead and say, we don't, we're, we're not going to allow zoning to prohibit clotheslines. But as soon as they cross that line into private contracts, that's when it's a bad press. And, well, we're going to interfere with your private contract this way and that way. Yeah, and if they want to limit local government, that's fine, but yes. they should not get involved exactly. in private contracts. Exactly. That's the problem with the bill is, is where it crosses into tenant-landlord relations. Mm -hmm. okay, so what exactly does it say? It says that, that no, um, with nothing withstanding, you will be basically be allowed oh, to okay. do a clothesline if you so wish. So even if you've got a lease with your landlord that says you will not put a clothesline up, you can put a clothesline up. I see. Okay. Yeah. Sovereign individuals have an unlimited right to contract. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, in this case, what they're saying is sovereign individuals have an unlimited right to close lines. <laughs> You're a sovereign individual. Yes. Well, no. Sure. At least I claim to be. No, which is more important to you, the right to contract or the right to dry your clothes? Contract. Because that's basically what they're saying. They're saying the close line is more important than your right to, than your right to contract. This, this, is, this has been the Chamber of the House of Representatives since 1819. Yeah, 1 o'clock here. Thank Constitution. you. There you well, go. that wasn't yeah. listed. <laughs> Everybody else got in the Constitution? Thank you. Sound interesting? Want to learn more? Want advice? Want assistance? Check out nhliberty.org. You've got friends. What doesn't this leafleteer get?